I have good news and I have bad news. The good news is that you are currently studying in one of the most prestigious business schools in France. The bad news is that you are learning skills for a job that doesn't even exist yet. Why? It's partly because of artificial intelligence. Broadly speaking, artificial intelligence is a software that can learn from huge amounts of data and mimic human decisions. AI is nothing new. The mathematics behind one of the most advanced frameworks in AI, which is neural networks, have been around since 1975. So why are we only hearing about this now? Why the big boom lately? The answer is, it's kind of because of us. We, as humans, started collecting data about everything. What we do, what we eat, where we go, what we listen to, etc., etc. And this huge collection of data has paved the way to the current boom in AI that we are experiencing. Now the big question is, given enough data, will artificial intelligence replace me at my job? And if so, what can we do about it? In order to answer that question, we are going to have to study a little bit the history of automation. Because in terms of human history, AI is the Darwinian evolution of automation. For most of human history, we've been in agriculture. We've been working the fields, planting potatoes so that more potatoes would come out so that we could eat. Our productivity was quite low, but it kind of worked for us. However, as intelligent human beings, we started innovating. We came up with crop rotations, we started to invent tools, and our jobs got easier. All of a sudden, we needed less people for the same amount of good produced, and jobs were lost. However, new, better-paying jobs appeared because those tools needed to be built and needed to be sold. The result was an overall average uh, increase in the, um, in the living standard, standards of humanity. Then came the Industrial Revolution. Machines started creating machines, and people were driven away from factories and into the service industry. The same thing happened. People lost jobs, people got new jobs, better paying jobs, and once again, the standard of living of humanity increased. And lately, we entered the information age. And once again, jobs are being lost and we're panicking. So, should we? Because given these trends, innovation should clearly save us and give us more, better jobs, right? This might not be as simple this time around. You see, change is brutally fast. These cycles are getting shorter and shorter, and we are not used to that. Our ancestors had the, our ancestors had the uh, luxury of having several generations to adapt to the new economy. We barely have a couple of years. As an example, a um, hundred years ago or so, we invented cars, huge leap forward. Uh, the car needed a couple of decades, maybe half a century, to completely replace the industries linked to horse. Fast forward to today, and Netflix drove blockbusters into the ground in just a couple of years. This is a problem for us. There are a couple of solutions that are already being discussed. One of them is the focus on innovation-heavy industries in order to unlock new levels of economy and create more jobs. Independently from what you think about Bitcoin, the technology behind it, which is blockchain, is revolutionary and has already created countless new, very highly specialized jobs. Another solution is the introduction of a universal basic income. The universal basic income is a concept where you give everyone a minimum living wage for them to take their time, adapt to the new economy, learn new skills, without risking people to slip under the poverty threshold. On a more individual level, allow me to give you some advice. Learn to code if you haven't already. I assure you, it's way easier to get started than you'd think. You have so many great materials online, great free courses, 
where you can start. Even as I could give some of them. Um, if you want to stay relevant in your careers in the coming decades, I highly recommend that you, you start to self-teach the basics of web development. On a more macro level, Peter Thiel, founder of PayPal and Palantir, says that machines and humans are not necessarily incompatible and that we are simply good at different things. An example is this. This is the Da Vinci surgical system. It is a robot that was designed to enhance human surgeons' capabilities and to make operations faster and safer. It wasn't designed to replace the human surgeon altogether. This is a very good example of the practical applications of this theory. Back in 2012, Google ran a very serious experiment. They created a supercomputer with 16,000 core processing units, and they used it to watch YouTube. What they did is that they ran a deep learning algorithm on that supercomputer to watch millions of thumbnails on YouTube. By the end of the experiment, the algorithm was capable of recognizing the picture of a cat with a very high accuracy, 75%. That is very impressive until you realize that the average human baby four-year-old can recognize a cat 100% of the time. So when my old laptop can beat the best human mathematicians in the world at certain tasks, but a supercomputer can't beat a baby at other tasks, you start to realize that there is room for synergy. My very own company that I founded is based on this principle. Where our competitors are building software that replaces the human marketing manager, we are building AI-based tools that helps, that gives them insight, that helps them make better data-driven decisions. I'm a big fan of this theory for the simple reason that it favors complementarity to substitution. If there is one thing that I want you guys to take away from my talk today, it is that we live in an awesome information age. Leverage it. AI is more accessible than ever in human history. Use it to innovate and to create yourselves the jobs for the new economy. Thank you.